Hi, today, yes, I am coloring using only pink, and of course, this is not an original idea of mine. Many artists and creators have already shown their take on this trend. And I've seen all of the videos, they bring out their marker boxes and the coloring pencil boxes and lay out dozens of colors to use, and it looks amazing. So I really wanted to try it. I've been enjoying coloring so much. The only thing is, these are all my pink markers and coloring pencils. So it's gonna be interesting because this is all I have, uh, but I'm still eager to start, so let's do it. Here's the coloring book I'm using for this challenge. I saw it on one of Myra Byler's videos and I definitely thought this book series was so cute, I wanted to get one to have fun. But I saw that video and made the purchase over six months ago, so I thought the best way for me to actually make sure I use it was to make a video with it. I am choosing to start on the very first page, on the off chance that this video takes off and we can continue coloring more pages with just one color. Then we will have red next, then orange, and so on. I think it would be super satisfying to flip through the book in rainbow order. I never do this, but for today, I'm going to start by bringing in an extra piece of paper and swatch all of my materials to see what I'm working with. I am using a little silicon mat under the swatch page to protect my book from the alcohol markers, and here we go. My first thoughts are, wow, it's almost like I'm going to work with highlighters here. <laughs> that first pink seems bright. Next one is better, and then we're back to neon. Okay, with my huge collection of four markers done, it was time to do the coloring pencils. I started with this cheap Crayola I found in my desk, and now I'm so thankful for these two extra shades. And then I moved to my Prismacolors. Last two are dangerously close to red, but I'm going to keep them to be able to change shades more. I also found an extra alcohol marker that's almost like a pinkish ivory because I thought um, this one could serve as a great base to layer the coloring pencils on. I was ready, just one more step, adding an extra piece of paper behind the image we're coloring today to protect from the marker's bleed. So I started small because I was really scared about this process. I saw so many spaces that needed to be colored and I had so little color options. Plus, I've never done anything even similar to this, and I've seen way too many amazing artists tackle this challenge in different ways. I am intimidated, and I'm a little worried about the simplicity of my materials and my idea. Also, working with pencils and markers is so different than my go-to media, which is heavy body acrylics. With acrylics, you can get dozens of different colors from mixing just three. With this, I, I felt very limited, and again, a bit scared. I had planned to cover everything first with alcohol markers and then add depth with the pencils. But with these options, I'm afraid if I just jump in and fill everything with five colors, I'm getting a flat sort of neon mess. So I started with what seemed to be the main characters of the scene, the bunny and the flower. And just after those two, I drop the markers and jump into bringing colors with the pencils because I'm not feeling confident about choosing the base color combinations from my marker options. And I wanna see if I can actually get more range with the pencils on top. I am also very afraid about using these bright marker colors. They almost all look like highlighters to me. They're so bright. I am using the darkest one for the tulips and that feels wrong immediately. <laughs> they look so red on screen too. This color right now is just being so in your face bright. For the leaves, I thought I could get more color variants if I used the very, very light pink to cover all of the foliage. So I went ahead and painted the whole thing with the same color, all the foliage at once. Even though I had no clue how I was gonna make it different, at this point I was thinking, Maybe I should cover everything with markers anyhow and see where it takes me. But once I colored all of the leaves and the signs with the same marker, it looked so flat and not harmonious at all, so I was afraid again. And again, my thought was finish the flowers completely and then you'll get more confident with the process. I thought if this part looked nice when completely finished, maybe that could fuel me to do the whole page with a little less fear. As I move forward with this project, I'm thinking it's probably an advantage to have a bunch of markers again to use all of them. I don't know, 50, 60, 100? You have more options to work with, so it might be easier 
I don't know. But in the other hand, I'm happy I'm showing you that somehow you don't need all of the supplies and you can still create stuff and try different things and have fun. So maybe it's not bad after all that I'm doing it differently. These were my thoughts as I tried to transform these three flat, not very matching colors of pink into something nicer with my also very limited amount of color pencils. After seeing this area practically finished, I was slowly gaining confidence and went for this little box down here. I wanted to test how much of a stretch or a cheat it would be to add an undertone. Like what happens if I add a little bit of yellow? Will it be pink with an undertone of yellow or just evidently yellow? You'll be the judge. I'm still not sure, but I opted to leave the undercolor experiment there and continue to use just my swatch colors. Finish those flowers and armed with a little bit more confidence, I went ahead and covered all of the illustration with markers. I thought it would be better to see the colors put down as a whole and didn't just add the pencils on top to improve the whole thing. And after I finally gained the courage to cover the whole thing, I immediately think it actually looks okay. So in with coloring pencils. I did end up getting a gray marker for the tires to mix with pink and get another shade. And again, I'm not sure if mixing stuff into pink to get a different pink is chaining or not. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I want to see what you think about it. Let me just share with you the recurring thoughts I had throughout the process of coloring this page. One, I wish I had more marker colors. <laughs> Two, I wish I'd gotten brush nibs for my markers. Three, maybe I should try a version of this challenge with mixable paint. Four, it's amazing how much I am enjoying coloring as an adult. There's something so magical about it. I feel very happy and I find myself wanting to do it again and again. And I was also thinking about my goals for this channel. I want it to be a space to share creativity, ideas, and good vibes, but I want it to be more. I want it to be a tool for me to be able to share more with others. I feel very happy when I know that something I can give will make another person happy in return. So I thought to myself throughout the whole process that if this video takes off and I do get to do the second one, which would be red, I need a new set of markers because this one mysteriously doesn't have red in it, just burgundy. And if that happens and I do get an extra set of markers, I will definitely want you to have a copy of the book and markers as well. So in a way we could create together, I don't know. So if that happens, I'll get an extra set and I'll have a giveaway for it. That's one of my dreams, that I can give back all of the love I receive. And another big one is to find better ways to become a community in which we even get to co-create somehow. Big dreams, we'll see. And with that, Here's my finished color page and the tools that got me here. I truly hope you enjoyed this video and that it brought a little bit of light to your day. If you wanna see this done better <laughs> in a wonderful, wonderful video, please check out my friend's Anthony video. It is so good. With that, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Bye.